Let's talk about endorsements. This is a subject that I mostly haven't talked about because I am not an endorsing artist and there are plenty of really helpful videos out there from artists and a &Rs, um, with really good information for those of you interested in learning more about the world of endorsements. But there is one aspect um, to this scene that I think kind of goes overlooked and people don't really talk about and I wanted to dig into that a little bit today and then also share a personal experience, a uh, personal endorsement story. So before we do that, let's just clear the air a little bit on what endorsements are and why some people get endorsements and other people don't. So the common young drummer misconception, I think, is that someone will get an endorsement because they are really good at drums, let's say. So that is false, but there is some truth to it. The reason it's false is because a company will endorse an artist, or rather, an artist will endorse a company because there is some sort of mutual relationship, some sort of mutual, typically marketing relationship to be had between those two entities. So the company wants to be associated with the artist's brand or their image, and the artist wants the support in, uh, from the company in the form of either discounted or free gear, maybe they want to be featured on that company's website. Basically, both parties want to be associated with the other party for marketing reasons and, and other reasons. So that's the reason that they would get uh, an endorsement deal is, first of all, the, um, the artist wants to be associated with the company, and more importantly, that company wants to be associated with the artist. Now, the companies want to be associated with artists who are usually really good because those who are really good at drums tend to have more influence and more marketing appeal and more potential to sell products. So in some way, there is a correlation between being better at the instrument and being more likely to have an endorsement deal, but it's definitely not a one-to-one -one relationship. And there are plenty of drummers that are amazing and maybe don't have endorsement deals because they don't have a following, they don't have a reach, no one really knows who they are, and therefore there's not there's not much product that can be sold and there's not much value in being associated with that person on such a small level. So whatever it might be that makes an artist's brand desirable, whether it be social media reach, uh, whether they're in a highly influential band, whether you know they're local legends in their community, whatever it might be, there has to be something that makes that artist appealing as a marketing device. And this doesn't have to be a strictly you know, a uh, cold, calculated business relationship. There's definitely um, interpersonal relationships in, in that world that, uh, that factor in as well, and, and there's definitely a networking side of it too. Um, but it is a, uh, a symbiotic business relationship, uh, basically, at the end of the day. So just because you are really good at the drums does not necessarily mean that you know, every drum company you want free gear from is going to come knocking at your door and offering you free gear. So just as an example, let's look at my uh, viability as an endorsing artist. Um, what I have to bring to the table as far as influence is nothing truly spectacular at this point. So, you know, a big company like Zildjian or Meinl or DW or whoever it might be doesn't have a huge in incentive to make me an endorsing artist because what I bring to the table at this point is um, I make these videos and I've got almost, you know, a thousand uh, lovely subscribers, not very many Instagram followers. I play in a few bands that are not very well known. Um, and I teach, you know, anywhere between 30 to 40 students and have maybe influence over some more students. And I also work at the drum shop, so there's some influence there. So it's not that I don't have any influence uh, or you know marketing cachet I guess to bring to the table but there's no real reason at this point for DW to come knocking at my door and and giving me free drum sets and flying me out to LA to make videos for them so the best I could hope for at this stage of the game is maybe a low-level stick or head endorsement from one of the major companies and even that's probably a stretch if I'm being honest so this brings me to the point I wanted to make, which is the reason that usually younger drummers want endorsements and the way that certain usually smaller companies can capitalize on that desire and 
almost in a predatory way um, utilize that for their own gain and basically just to make sales. So let's talk about the two reasons that a usually younger drummer would want an endorsement or would want to endorse a company. And it's usually for two reasons. The first one is that they want free gear. This is an obvious one and of course who doesn't want free gear, but especially for younger drummers who have less discretionary income, the idea of getting a bunch of pro level gear for free is of course very attractive. So that's an easy one to understand. The second one is validation. There's, I think, a certain level of insecurity that comes with being an artist of, of, of any kind, uh, but especially an instrumentalist, and especially when you're younger, there's, there's definitely an, an insecurity that's built into playing the instrument. And if you have an endorsement deal or if you endorse a company, there's a certain level of validation there and it almost feels like maybe a concrete example um, of your worth. Um, being noticed by by this company or, or this um, this affirmation that what you do is good enough to provide value to this company so so there's a, a sense of validation there now I know that these are the two reasons because this was me exactly when I was a younger when I was a, a teenage drummer these are the two reasons exactly why I really wanted an endorsement deal. Now, there was no reason to give me an endorsement deal at the time, and I mean, there still isn't really a reason to give me an endorsement deal, but there certainly wasn't at that point in time. Uh, but it was something that I still desperately wanted for those two reasons. The free gear sounded nice, and, and the validation, um, of course, which isn't uh, as much of an issue for me now, but um, but at that time it definitely was. So those those two elements, those two psychological elements, were definitely at play um, in the story I'm about to tell you, which is my endorsement deal story. So some of you may remember uh, a period of time where a bunch of custom drum companies were emerging and they were basically putting together shells they were putting together keller shells with tube lugs and doing some kind of cool finishes and wraps and lacquers and there were all of these companies um, and only a few of them survived sjc is kind of the the biggest one that survived out of that era but one of them you may remember was shine custom drums um, out of california and I was in that stage where I really wanted an endorsement deal and you know, had the idea that maybe I would be worth uh, endorsing as, as an artist. And I started a dialogue with Shine Drums and basically what ended up happening is I spoke to them on the phone. They seemed super cool. They talked to me like, we'll help you grow your brand and you can help us grow our brand. And really all I had to offer at the time was I made some drum covers that I played not that well. And you know, they had a certain number of not very many views on them on YouTube. And that was pretty much all I had. And they were talking like, oh yeah, you know, they were they were, they seemed very interested in me. But really what was going on is it was basically a scam where they said, well, you know, we normally sell this custom kit for you know, 2,400 bucks, but because you will be one of our, um, our our designated artists, we'll sell it to you for 1,600 bucks, which, you know, of course, the price was supposed to be 1,600 bucks all along, but in my mind, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna get an endorsement deal. Um, and, and that was very appealing to me. So long story short, um, my I had my parents order it on their credit card. I paid them back, I, I paid for the kit, I, I had it on order. Uh, and I, I was all excited because I was going to be an endorsed Shine custom drums artist. And the company basically went out of business, shuttered their doors, stopped answering calls, and um, basically took the money. Now, the good news is that since we paid with a credit card, uh, my parents were able to, to get the money back. But, um, but I would have been completely SOL if I had paid with a, a check or you know a wire or something like that. And uh, yeah, basically Shine was, at that point in time at least, completely duplicitous, um, totally preyed on my insecurities as a young drummer in order to make a sale. And then as if that wasn't bad enough, they basically tried to steal uh, my money and not fulfill the order after the fact. So I never got my Shine custom kit, which ended up being a blessing uh, in disguise at the end of the day. But, um, 
That is not, I think, a completely uncommon story. And I see a lot of younger drummers out there, and I'm sure you've seen it too, and a lot of sort of smaller companies that tend to, to find each other. And sometimes it's fine, you know, sometimes there's a smaller company that finds sort of an up and coming artist and that relationship makes sense where they're going to grow together. But I just feel like I've seen so many YouTube, you know, drum covers with 400 views or, or whatever and, you know, they're endorsed by, you know, uh, Johnny's Gels and like Ricky's Stick Tape and all of these like kind of novelty products or like some stick company you've never heard of or there's definitely a couple a couple symbol companies out there that I'm sure you can think of that seem to endorse anyone, you know, endorse anyone that wants an endorsement. But basically what's going on is um, for like these symbol companies, they're just selling discounted product. They're just making sales and and they're doing it under the guise of endorsing artists. and. Um, it's not like every company out there that's doing that is completely um, complicit or, or has that mentality, but um, that definitely exists. Uh, so my advice, which, you know, take it for what it's worth, to any companies or more likely young drummers that might be watching this is try not to worry about endorsements at all, but if you are worried about endorsements, try and only be interested in endorsing products that you would actually use otherwise. So, you know, when all of these gimmicky product companies, you know, don't, don't reach out to them and, and, you know, ask to get free gummies or whatever it might be to, um, to, to feel like you're an endorsed artist or that you're an endorsing artist. Because what ends up happening is that I feel like both parties end up cheapening each other's brand, I think it kind of has the opposite effect that, that you want. And I, I, I don't want to call anyone out in particular, and I don't want this to sound like a diatribe, but um, it definitely was a hard lesson for me to learn, and I feel like it's worth mentioning. So um, hopefully that story and uh, those thoughts are of some use to somebody out there. Um, let me know what you think, if you have any opinions or if there's anything that you think that I'm getting wrong here or any part of the story that I'm missing, please let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, you can like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next one.